Uh, our next session here is called How to Find Your Magic Place. And we will be talking about Preeti Shanoi's latest book, The Magic Mindset, How to Find Your Happy Place. Preeti Shanoi is among the highest selling authors in India, and she's recognized by Forbes as one of the most influential celebrities in India. She will be in conversation with Vani Mahesh, who is an author and founder of EasyLib, India's first online library. Over to you, Vani. Uh well, good morning, everyone. And uh, thank you for being here, uh, you know, on a weekend morning at 11, but you know, Preeti draws the crowd. <laughs> and Preeti, congratulations on this uh, wonderful new book. Thanks a lot, Vani. Nice to be here. So foggy this morning, even I didn't feel like waking up. <laughs> I don't know how we all woke up and came. <laughs> um, so Preeti, uh, let me just jump into the questions right away without uh, further ado. See, you, I know you have written some nonfiction, but uh, you are predominantly a fiction writer. Yeah. So how did uh, nonfiction of this sort come about? Yeah, so mainly I have written uh, fiction books and there was one non-fiction book I wrote which is why we love the way we do which was ex uh, which was actually a collection of my newspaper columns I used to write a column uh, in the financial express on uh, relationships and that's how that book came about but this book was completely a product of the lockdown you know so uh, everyone finds it astounding that I wrote a book on positivity during the lockdown and I think that was a much needed book because I think the lockdown kind of changed all our perspectives about everything. Everything that we knew about life turned upside down. You know, there was nothing, nothing. There was the entire foundation was uh, shaken, so to speak. So actually, I started writing this book at that time in 2020. I started writing the book. So how the book came about is uh, in March 2020, the first lockdown was announced and I started a series of blog posts called 21 Days of Positivity. So every day I would post a little thing because that time naively we thought the lockdown would be for 21 days. We thought after 21 days, life will go back to normal. But then 21 days became 40 days, became 50 days, became 60 days and there was no sign of the lockdown easing up. And slowly the post that I wrote on my blog went on to Instagram and so many people started messaging me saying that they are waiting for my stories. And that was very, that was something very surprising to me because I was just posting ordinary things, a flower that bloomed, a beautiful sunrise, something that I felt joy in. My children were stuck at that time. Both were abroad and both were stuck. And it was really a hard time. And that's when I started writing this book. It was almost like I was writing it for my children, you know, because I wanted to pass uh, them pass on to them everything that I learned about life. And I wanted to tell them that, look, it's not so bad. And there was so much uncertainty. And when I mentioned this to an editor, they loved the idea. So someone at Harper loved the idea and they wanted me to write this book. And that's when I started working on it formally. So formally, I started organizing it. I started thinking. And then the result that you see is this, like, I'm so happy that this book happened now. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I know this is a, I know we have uh, you know talked about the book before, but this is one question that has always been at the back of my head, which I never got around to asking. I don't know why. Uh, the title itself, I mean, it's such a beautiful title. Mm -hmm. I know you take a lot of effort into your book covers, your book titles. So do you want to elaborate, you know, how you decided on uh, this charming title? Yeah, to be honest, this title, you know, while most of my other books, fiction books, I do have a huge role to play in the title. This one, I didn't really have a title. The working title was the positivity book because I wasn't really thinking about title and all of that. I was focusing more on the content. And then when I submitted it to Harper, the editor loved it. So she came up with the title, actually. And then when she came up with the title, I said, yeah, that absolutely fits the book. And even the cover. So we went through so many covers and then finally we settled on this one because we are all under that protective umbrella. You know, we always go through life with that umbrella and we are always protected because we all like to stay in our comfort zones. But it's only when you throw away the umbrella that the magic happens. And that's what this cover signifies. You know, it's, it's like when you remove when you get out of your comfort zone. And to some extent, COVID did push us all out of our comfort zone. And that's how this cover was chosen. And I really felt that it kind of uh, captured the essence of the book. Oh, absolutely. You know, talking about, uh, my, you know, staying inside the inside our comfort zones. Yeah. Uh, you are very right. You know, uh, COVID was a time uh, which completely 
you know uh, took us by surprise yeah. took all of us by surprise yeah. and yeah. i follow your uh, social media posts your blog posts they are very very appealing you know uh, i feel sometimes when something genuinely appeals to the author that reaches the audience yeah, yeah. do you think that's happening here uh, yes because uh, see there are uh, two kinds of people who post on social media one is they are nothing like that in real life they have a social media persona and they have a real life persona and you cannot relate when you meet them in real life you will wonder oh my god is it that person but i am i am very true even on social media i am exactly the way i am uh, you know in front of you so i think uh, when i post something it's genuine it's like from the heart and i feel it's something that will that has helped me mostly i feel i'm posting for myself it's like little notes to myself but which is great because the audience is able to connect with with it which i am very happy about yeah you know even when i follow you on uh, instagram i see so many people are genuinely helped yeah by uh, your posts and the book especially yeah. so who did you have in mind i know uh, you had your children in mind yeah. i'm glad uh, you know it was not just confined to that and it came to all of us i mm. thoroughly enjoyed reading the book thank you uh, so who do you think uh, this book will help the most so actually what happened is uh, you know i started getting long messages during the lockdown saying how are you always positive is it possible to be always positive what if something horrible has happened so and then when i started answering them i realized i have so much to say so the very first chapter in this book is the trouble with positivity because everyone says look at the bright side you know you have so much be grateful for it but sometimes you just can't be grateful and that's that's the thing i address most that it is okay to feel bad it is okay to feel awful and that's what i wanted to tell people look every day is not going to be positive and every time you cannot uh, you know go through life with a ladi da tune in your head i mean it's just not possible that's not practical but we can take tiny steps if you if one day all you feel like doing is just sitting in bed and eating a tub of popcorn and watch netflix do that but you know every day take tiny 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 steps so that you come out of that zone and that's what i say in the book and this is the advice that i had for a lot of people and so that's the, probably i think the book will help to answer your question the book will help anyone who is stuck in a slightly uh, bad place and they want to get out they want to look i mean they want to feel slightly better and that's where this book is going to help people yeah you know probably everybody is stuck in a bad place yeah. not some maybe you know slightly bad place and some maybe in a really deeply bad uh, yeah. place but so i think this book is definitely for everyone uh, if any of you haven't read the book yet i strongly urge that you go get the book and you are also going to be uh, you know answering questions in the next yeah. session so this is just a heads up to have your copies because for the next session you need to have a copy of preeti's book in hand yeah. <laughs> so i don't want you to be disappointed that you can't attend the ama <laughs> So anyway that brings me to the next question uh with the non fiction the structure is everything yeah and it is the most difficult thing to otherwise it will yeah. come out very disjointed true true and the flow in your book is amazing yeah so how did that come about so that actually took a lot of work because initially when i wrote it was not structured at all i was just writing whatever came to my head i knew i wanted to write on relationships i knew i wanted to write on health i knew i wanted to write on finances because these are the three areas which most people have trouble with i read tarot actually i learned how to read the tarot and most people who ask me questions will generally it will fall into these categories so i said i'm going to address that in my book and the first thing i had to address was what is the problem with this positivity sometimes that word positivity itself irritates people you know be positive so i mentioned an uh, mention an incident like that so there was this movie called no entry which was a big hit many years back so in that anil kapoor keeps saying be positive be positive when they get badly beaten and then he asks a hey, be positive kya hai he said mera blood group hai hospital mein zarurat hoga when we get beaten up so i mentioned that incident in the book so i didn't want this to be a very preachy book you know oh you can be positive you can do this you can do that the book it doesn't promise anything that you can't do and all of it has is are things that i have followed myself when i was stuck in a bad situation when i couldn't say no there is a chapter in this book on how to say no like because most of us can't say no so that's i have addressed that because i made those mistakes and i have shared everything 
you know whatever i learned i've shared in the book so very practical steps that which people can take so i think uh, that to me is the usp of the book too that these are your experiences you yeah. know this is what you have gone through you're not just preaching there yeah. you're sharing you know that, that's what comes across uh, when you read the book um and another uh, really charming feature about the book are all the incidents that you mention both your personal uh, experiences and also you know what you have collected from uh, you know others uh, works such as books or media so how did you put it all together yeah that was actually the hard part because see i didn't want to write uh, about people whom everyone knows about because you know you will find loads of information like if you say uh, dirubai ambani everyone knows how he this thing everyone knows his story is inspiring but i didn't want that so i collected uh, things which people have not heard about for example there is an 83 year old weightlifting granny in the book she started uh, you know weightlifting which i found remarkable and i found that inspiring and at 80 she started uh, weightlifting and i mentioned that in the book and you can actually go and see her pushing away sofas with her leg because she's done her leg workouts and she wears a sari a very traditional lady which is which i found very inspiring and then there is another incident that i mentioned in the book which is the ellen langer experiment and that was uh, from the harvard journals where she collected a group of uh, 12 70 plus men and all their parameters were measured when they came uh, into the house and they she wanted to know whether by changing our thoughts whether we can create physical changes in our body so all these people like many of them couldn't even walk they had high bp cholesterol all of it was recorded and then what she did is she created in that house everything from 1950 so the there was only black and white television and uh, all the songs were played by, and 1950 was when these men were in the prime of their youth and they were uh, uh, they were instructed to pretend that it's 1950 so all the conversation centered around that you know about fidel castro and all of that and at the end of that period when again they measured their parameters was a remarkable difference like a person who had uh, walked in on wheelchair was seeing was seen playing football on the lawn and all of this is documented so that to me was amazing so these are things which people don't know about like how can our mindset change how we feel because many of us will oh we are old then you will feel you are old you know but it's not so simple so i have explained all of that uh, in the book so it was difficult to collect these incidents but i am very glad because whenever i came across an inspiring story and i have blogged ever since 2006 i have blogged so i took some from my blog because i had already mentioned it because these are things which stay with you you know i'm sure all of you will remember these two incidents which i just mentioned and i'm sure you'll find inspiration from these uh, incidents so like these these incidents stayed with me and when i was writing the book they all just came yeah i think that's amazing because uh, to me you know this uh, granny was very inspiring and also uh, a chapter where you mentioned this man who was in a coma forever and how he you know finds his way out of yeah, that yeah i thought that was very powerful yeah so that happened actually when i was in uk so there was this person called graham miles and he got into an accident and uh, he was in this uh, locked in syndrome everything from his uh, throat down was frozen and the doctor said that he'll never walk again you know he can't even move so he says that uh, initially all he could do was just uh, you know uh, he could just blink that's all he could do so he focused on that then he slowly focused on his uh, little toe and he started like he kept visualizing that i can move my uh, little toe and now today he races cars he's not only walking he's driving cars like you know so it's amazing the power of mind is amazing and he always feels that uh, we can manipulate our brain into doing certain things and i found his story extremely inspiring so that also i have mentioned in the book like this there are many stories scattered throughout the book along with my personal experiences and at the end of each chapter this you know there's this principle and throughout the book there are also interactive exercises like you know so that because whatever i do may not work for what you know what your situation is or what somebody else's situation is so i have asked questions so that you can find the answers to your problems and then apply probably the principles along with the examples and to probably help people yeah i think those exercises are uh, extremely helpful because it makes you think you know otherwise you just keep reading it like uh, fiction and then you won't really apply uh, your mind to it so i loved the exercise too and I, the final 
uh, part of the book is the 14 day challenge right mm. uh i mean i haven't done that guilty as charged <laughs> yeah. uh, but i see so many people are doing that mm-hmm. and they are yeah. posting saying you know what it really changed the way they think yeah. uh do you want to talk about how you came up with that yeah because see i felt that somebody has to tell us what to do okay someone and make it fun because we don't want these boring things so it has to be easy enough for us to take that small step because when you are stuck in a dark place I mean the last thing you want to do is hear some <laughs> inspirational thing yeah we will get irritated with that inspirational thing so maybe if you do a small thing like there are at the end of the book is part 4 the book is divided into four parts so part 4 is fun with the magic mindset a 14 day activity challenge to help you start your journey into the magic mindset so there are these small things like week 1 entire 7 days you focus on yourself so week 1 day 1 is a simple massage for tired feet things needed is just oil coconut oil olive oil and a large towel old pair of slippers and i've said how to do it and all of these are things that i have tried you know and i felt so great i said wow a simple massage like that for feet can make you feel great so like this there are so many activities all of them tried and tested by yours truly so you all can try it and a lot of people tried it on social media and they tag me and i feel good seeing that the book is actually helping people and i've reshared that in my posts and stories yeah you know um, i i keep uh, following all your posts and all your uh, you know thoughts on social media especially on instagram uh, i know you do have a huge following and uh, but i think uh, once again that comes down to people can relate to you you know people can relate to what you're saying uh, so how do you think uh, you know that's happening like how are you for being able to you know help so many people so i think uh, basically see even your book vani meet me in the middle i loved the book thank you yeah i loved it so vani has just written meet me in the middle and it's a contemporary fiction i could relate to the character i could so relate to anu so i think it's like i think we are both like very practical people so i think that comes across who the author is comes across in the book so we are not going to write some uh, you know very literary characters who are brooding and i'm not saying that's a bad thing but you are able to relate relate to the characters because their problems are like your own so that's what i've done in this book too you know i have given problems which i have faced which many people face and that's how i made it relatable because i've given practical steps i have given tiny things not things that you can't do and things that will help you so i think it's just like how we are as people that comes across in the book so that's how i am as a person if i feel bad about something yeah yes i will cry i will feel sad but i will dust myself and you know i'll bounce back and i've shared what i uh, shared about the things that i do and i really am happy it's helping people yeah i think you know you are one of the i mean uh, those of you who don't know priya and i have been friends for many many years now and uh, uh, she is someone with that magic mindset i really think you really uh, have that ability to as you said you know be rational about yeah. situations about people you never just just jump to conclusions yeah. uh, so are we going to uh, look for more non fiction from you actually no <laughs> at least as it this itself took it was so hard to write this non fiction because there's so much of things that i had to research the research was tremendous see when it's fiction also i research but then my characters have the freedom to do what they want if my character gets bored the character will just jump into a jeep and go off somewhere and i can go along with the character but that's not so in uh, non fiction and every fact is meticulously checked every source is mentioned and it was very hard to write on uh, positivity and i felt like i've given it my all so next non fiction probably not but then you never know because see this book i never planned and it came about ha uh, i think uh, i agree with you i think th- this book came because of uh, the pandemic and yeah. hopefully the next one will come when we are out of the pandemic <laughs> <I> hope so <laughs> so uh, hopefully the we- omicron or whatever how are you pronounce it will run away <laughs> that horrible thing <laughs> we one can only hope <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> so uh, preeti the book uh, is not only commercially very successful commercial success means that you know many people are reading it yeah, i think yeah. that's what it translates to and congratulations once again on that and now uh, you know you have been nominated for this prestigious uh, best book in the self help category by amazon yeah. so proud yeah, thank uh, you. that uh, i mean you're a great author but to me the pride also comes from the fact that you are from bangalore you're my friend yeah. so how does it feel it was a very pleasant surprise so i didn't even know that the book was nominated and then people started voting 
for the book and sending me screenshots saying that I voted. So that's when I knew it was nominated. Then I said, where did you vote? So then they said, okay, your book is there on Amazon. So all of you guys who have an Amazon account, please go and vote for this book. And it's, I think this is the only Indian book in that. The other books are, uh, I, I think there's one by Robin Sharma and one Ikigai. Or I, don't, I don't remember which, which one the other books are. But the only one you need to remember is this one. <laughs> so please go vote for my book on Amazon if you have an Amazon account. Yeah, I do hope, uh, you know, all of us will vote for the book and make this a huge success because uh, even I don't remember who all were nominated, but uh, uh, they are some very well-known international authors. And uh, as I said, it's a moment of pride for all of us that Thank your you. book is uh, featuring on the list. Um, so, yeah, anyone have any questions? This is your chance to ask because the next session is uh, at 12.15. And that's an AMA where you'll be allowed inside only if you have a copy of the book. So this is kind of free. You know, if anyone has any questions, please free, feel free to ask. I'll be more than happy to answer it. Don't think any question is uh, trivial. Uh, I think that's what happens to us most of the time, you know, when you're given a mic and when you're asked, you know, yeah, actually, ask actually question. you should just pass the mic around because it's very intimidating for someone to walk all the way and stand here and ask that question when two people are sitting here on the stage, you know. <laughs> All right. When uh, I I do hope you know you uh, gather your questions, uh, uh, Preeti. Before that, is there any one paragraph that you would like to read out from the book that's dear to you? That uh... actually, let's play a game. So you guys, like uh, you know, tell me a number, okay? Because uh, I always tend to read out the same thing. So the there are uh, two twenty pages in the book. So any number from 1 to 220, call out and I'll read out a small para because that will really give you a taste of the book. I'll read out from page 74. Okay, so page 74 is about uh, the magic mindset for relationships. So I will read out a small paragraph. In some ways, relationships are like plants, but in other ways, they're also like banks. Any kind of loving act we do towards our partner will go into deposits. Each time we have a fight or say something mean to them, it will go into withdrawals. For the relationship to be rich and growing, the balance of account should always be positive. Hence, it's important to ensure that the deposit that we make is viewed by the other person as a deposit as well. Thus, if we get flowers for our partner, we might assume that we are making a deposit, but in their eyes, it may not be one. The other person might have preferred us tidying up the apartment instead of getting flowers. We need to pay attention to what love language our partner speaks. We then need to make a deposit in their currency. And what all of this is, I have explained uh, previously, you know, since you called out 74, I'm just reading out uh, this part. If you do not know or are unsure about what makes your partner feel loved, simply ask them. Ask them what their ideal day would be. Then strive to make it happen. Ask them what they would uh, specifically like if you did and ensure that you do it. So this was a small thing about uh, relationship, which I read out from page 74. That's yeah. such a powerful. Uh, okay. She wants you to read out from 11 <laughs> because they both said at the same time, are you both friends? Yeah. Since your friends page number was uh, read out. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. 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 That's smart. Yeah. That, that was smart. Yes. We yeah. have to give them 11. Yes. So I'll read you. Levin, so positivity as people uh, see it. According to Oxford Dictionary, positivity is a practice of being optimistic in attitude. According to the Cambridge Dictionary, positivity means the quality of having a positive attitude. They state the opposite as negativity. Since there's a lot of talk about being positive, curiosity led me to ask different people what they thought positivity meant. My 19-year-old daughter said, she was 19 at that time, she's 20 now, <laughs> I'm quickly clarifying when she's right there in the audience. My 19-year-old daughter said, positivity means finding the good even in the worst situations. When I posted the question on my social media, I got over 100 responses in a few hours. The answers offered me glimpses into people's worldviews, a cross-section of their minds, their philosophies, their approach to life and what they believed in. One definition that stood out was that positivity meant keeping our arms open to embrace everyone, especially ourselves. Only then would thoughts not linger longer than required. And only then can one understand self-love. If we manage to do, do this, we could also accept diversity and opinions and thoughts different from us. 
So thank you. Yeah, I think, you know, what most often uh, the odd age is treat the other person the way you want to be treated. Exactly. But yeah. I think it's the other way around. Treat Absolutely. them the way they want to be treated. Yes. And many of us don't do that. We think that just because something makes us feel good, it should make them feel good. But it it's not. You have to accept that you're two very different people. You know, it's you're very different people. So ask them what makes them feel good and do that thing. Yeah, uh, I think uh, miscommunication probably is the root cause of, uh, you know, most of the problems. Uh, nobody wakes up one morning saying, okay, today morning, I'm going to completely insult this person. <laughs> it <laughs> doesn't happen that way. True, true, true. But we still think, you know, what the other person is just out there to get us. No, but I think it also comes with that uh, feeling of possessiveness. Because if I'm your friend, I feel Bani should know this about me. You know, there's this kind of that possessiveness which so how do you not be that how do i mean how do you manage not to be that that i think basically uh, i think i am quick to apologize i don't know if my husband will agree he's right there sitting in the audience so i think i think basically you have to swallow your ego i think so because uh, look if the relationship matters how does it matter if you are right or wrong just say sorry if you value that person it doesn't matter you might be like you might have been right in your head you might have been right so just say really, look, I'm really sorry. Let's just forget this and let's just move on. And mostly I feel you have to ask that person. And I feel you have to be, you have to be sure that if you're honest, will that other person be able to take that honesty? So if you're, if they're not able to take it, then word it in a different way that in, in a way that they understand, I feel that's important. Yeah. I think once again, we all fall into that because we worded the way how we are feeling, yeah. you know, we just assume that the other person just should get that. And, uh, you know, do good by us. True. Uh, so, uh, Preeti, uh, this is uh, a question I'm sure uh, many will have in their heads. Uh, the so Your social media posts themselves are very weighty. I mean, uh, whether that thing that you post in the morning, your morning routine, yeah. uh, the stories or the posts, they are all, they all take a lot of effort and you're so consistent. Yeah. So what drives you? Uh, sharing on Instagram, frankly, actually I'm doing for myself because when I'm walking, it's something so pretty, you know, it's a greenery. So like, okay, this will make a good story. It actually doesn't take that much effort. It just takes a few seconds to just uh, record with my smartphone and immediately post it. It's not, and it's because I want to share. So it's nothing like, nothing like, uh, you know, I have to post today because some days when I don't feel like posting, I don't post, but mostly if I find something joyful, I always put a story because a 15 second story. I mean, I think 15 seconds, everyone can spare. So I just record that and post it. So it just comes in the course of my day. It's not that I go and seek stories to post because only if I have that, then it becomes heavy, you know? Yeah, that's true. I think, you know, if you're constantly thinking about the number of likes you're going to get or the yeah. views that you're going to get, yeah. uh, and probably that's going to put a damper. How about the posts? I mean, if we collect all your posts, there's a book in it right there. <laughs> yeah, probably. Though, although now I've started posting reels because, you know, reels is the new trend. And recently one of my ro reels crossed 1 million and that was like 1 million views. And that was astounding to me. And that reel was about uh, me and my mother. So there was this uh, photograph of me in, uh, in, in the childhood. It was a trend on Instagram. So I posted it and then I told my mother, I said the reel uh, crossed 1 million views. And she asked me, what happens? Do you get any money for it? <laughs> and it was... It was hilarious. I said, no, you'll not get any money, but you know, you'll get a lot of followers. She said, oh, okay, fine. So that, that, I mean, that kind of summarized, summarizes the social media, honestly. Absolutely. I yeah. think, uh, you know, whoever is on social media, we are easily pleased. Yeah. No, but I think it's nice also because it makes you feel connected because in the pandemic, I felt social media was what kept a lot of people sane. And ironically, it drove a lot of people insane also, you know, because everyone... True. Everyone is like posting their workouts and then you feel, you feel horrible. What am I doing? That person is getting fit. I'm sitting here and eating my popcorn and watching Netflix. So that it, it was, I think it's a two edged sword. And I have a chapter on that in my book as well on social media. Yeah. So now uh, final round, any questions, anybody before we wrap up? I'm um, an author too, and have recently shifted to Bangalore or garden city. And uh, my question is, that authors were always supposed to write. I remember my father was an author and his generation just wrote. Now as authors, literary festivals, social media, 
And uh, besides writing, besides the concept of an idea, we are supposed to do all yeah. that plus marketing, yeah. plus everything else that goes with it. True. Now, according to my boys, I've got two older, old, you know, their son are married and all that. They feel that uh, I'm not into enjoying life as much. It becomes almost like an addiction. And I have to stop myself in the day when I can enjoy what I'm supposed to enjoy. Otherwise, I'm constantly thinking about um, readers, sales, uh, how can I better this? And how can I put this post? And what? And my generation is not very sa savvy at it, hmm. too. So tell me, um, home, husband, children, all that, how do you keep a happy balance? Especially see, you, Preeti. Yeah, see, yeah. I switch off. When I'm writing, I'm writing. I'm not on social media at all. And I'm not constantly thinking about social media because social media is not life. And that's what I've said in this book, too, you know. Social media is great, but, but you're showing only the best bits. And it's very nice. I'm very active on social media, but it takes a few seconds of my day. And I like watching reels. So Algo Instagram has an algorithm where if you watch a certain kind of reel, it will keep showing you that. Like I've learned so much. So I guess it depends on how you embrace it. See, when I was growing up, I was reading books and all like I didn't even know if it, Enid Blyton was a man or a woman or whether it was Enid Blyton or Grid Blyton, you know. So in my head, I made up a story. I said, Enid Blyton and Grid Blyton are two sisters. So I would look carefully at that signature. So if you've written Enid Blyton, you know, say, oh, some books are written by Grid Blyton because it looked like Grid to me. Some are written by Enid Blyton. That was a story I made up. But today you can reach out to authors on social media. And I think that's a fantastic thing. I think it depends on how you see it. And will your book become a bestseller just because you have a large following on social media? No, no way. People are not fools just because they follow you for your content. They're not going to buy your book unless they really like the content in your book. So I feel it just depends on that. So like I said, I don't devote a whole lot of time. It just comes naturally. And one more thing, one more tip that I have for authors is don't, uh, you know, don't become active on social media only when your book comes out. Like many people do that, then that's fake. So I have been blogging since 2006. And I was blogging when no one was reading me. And uh, today millions are reading me and I'm still blogging, you know. So just do it for the love of it. And if you can't do it, that's fine too. Because word of mouth is the only thing that I feel will sell a book. Not the big budgets, not the other things. Social media makes it a little easier to maybe for the right person to discover your book. That's all. Because if you are putting out posts on, the, on social media and someone else like, uh, you know, likes it, then you see it, it's become easier. Hence, use it that way is my tip. Hi. Hi. Is life too long or life is short? I asked this question to my mother. Mm. She told life is long. I okay. asked her, can you elaborate? She couldn't answer. Okay. So I just want to know, is life short or long? I guess it depends on whether you're exercising or whether you're sitting and watching Korean shows. <laughs> when I watch Korean shows, life is very short. It quickly passes. <laughs> when I'm working out, life seems very long because, oh my God, when will this workout end? So I just guess it depends on uh, what you're doing and how you fill your days and what you do with your time. And uh, I think it doesn't matter as long as at the end of the day, you feel satisfied that I have done something, whether you watched a Korean show or worked out or eaten your favorite dish. If you feel satisfied at the end of the day, then I feel it doesn't matter because life is unpredictable. Whether it's long or short, you never know when it's going to end, you know. So make the most of it is what I have to say. I think that was so perfectly <laughs> said, you know, life is neither short nor long, but just unpredictable. Yeah, it's very unpredictable because, you, you know, whatever you don't think happens and whatever yeah. you plan never happens. Absolutely. I think, you know, that that should be the take home yeah. to uh, anybody else. And you told about the 14 day activity for, uh, you know, de-stressing and discouraging like a positivity. So what are the three, I know it's like a, not a spoiler, but just can you give a, a glimpse of the first three parts, like tell us what about it is. Uh, I'll just tell you what the first three parts are. So I'll, I'll just start. Part one is understanding the magic mindset. And three, there are three chapters in it. The first one is trouble with positivity. Second one is external circumstances and our mindset, whether 
we know what the circumstances are externally how it affects our mindset and the third one is the magic mindset can alter reality so in that i have spoken about how people like uh, ordinary people have done extraordinary things part 2 is practicing the magic mindset which is you know cornerstones of a quality life magic mindset for money magic mindset for relationships for good health and part 3 is sustaining the magic mindsets in that i talk about fighting the drains like for magic mindset for situations beyond our control for exams and interviews for dealing with other people's actions for saying no for social media and things like that and then part 4 is the activity thing which i spoke about thank you so much from australia i'll get the book right. thank you yeah preeti is a great proponent of the uh, law yeah of i believe in the law of attraction a lot and i'm le- uh, leading my dream life today and i have shared all of that in the book like what i followed and why people think it doesn't work because secret tells you so many things but the thing is it's not it's not easy to follow so i have said i've talked about how i followed it how i adapted it so i think we need to wrap up now i get the signal from uh, uh, you know uh, the man who is in charge and uh, two things before we leave uh, if you haven't read preeti's book uh, definitely uh, now is the opportunity to buy the book and attend her ama that's happening at 12:15 12:15 yeah yeah 12:15 you can meet her you can get it signed i think now right after this session and secondly please go ahead and vote for her book on amazon uh, we really need to make bangalore proud here yeah and thirdly pick up vani's book too meet me in the middle <laughs> thank you so much for the contemporary fiction yeah. thank you thanks so much thanks a lot vani Thank you guys thank you so much for being here